That's the podcast coach for November 25th, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that it says it's Saturday. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the school of podcasting.com, and joining me right over there is the one and only Jim Collison from the average guy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you as you're figuring out all the new buttons. Yes. I like I like all this switcheroo stuff that's going on here. Pretty great. <laughs> we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later of why you're doing some of these automated uh, automations. But uh, happy Saturday morning to you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a fun weekend. Do, should I share my secret? Is it going to make me yeah, look a, yeah. like a total buffoon? No, because, you, because be we, this happens to all of us at some point. Because it's a holiday weekend and because yesterday I didn't have to work. It felt a lot like Saturday. And even though last night I spent about an hour and a half, maybe an hour, finding questions for today, I woke up today and went to church. And it wasn't until I got to church and I went, that's weird. Nobody's here that I went, oh, wait a minute. It's Saturday. You didn't wake up and think about going to church. You actually went to church. Yeah, I I got up. (laughs) I was in automatic Sunday mode. And went in and took a shower, shower, ready, shaved, grabbed my guitar and ran out the door. And it's cold outside. Play. Yeah, it is. Cold. It's always cold outside. Yeah. And just just to give a little behind the scenes here, what's going on is I've connected my stream deck, which is a little box with buttons on it. And all the all it really is, is you assign things to these buttons. And so in a minute, when we do our coffee pour, I'm going to press one button that's going to play the coffee sound effect. It's going to play the coffee jingle and it's going to put Mark's information on the screen with one button. So that's, uh, that's exciting for me. It was like, I was totally nerding out on this thing last night. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. We, we tried it. We tested it. It works. It works yeah. pretty good, but uh, so with you, that, ready, yes. you ready to give it a spin? It, it would give, give it a spot. So of course that coffee pour is brought to you by our good friend, Mark over at podcast branding dot co and now i can click a button on the stream deck to go to the next slide uh podcast branding.co is my good buddy mark to coach and the great thing about mark is a he's been podcasting since 2018 b he's an award-winning podcaster well i don't know if he's an award-winning podcast he's a great podcast he's an award-winning graphic artist too many buttons too much on my brain here and um, if you want to look good and it doesn't matter if it's a pdf uh, i use him a lot for my artwork You'll see the podcast rodeo show, School of Podcasting, Ask the Podcast Coach. That's all done by Mark. And the the beautiful thing is he's going to sit down with you one-on-one and just make sure that everything is in alignment. Because you have to remember that they're going to see you before they hear you. And he's just going to make sure that your brand is in alignment with whatever your message is. And you're just not going to get that from somebody on Fiverr. So if you're not sure where to go, it's easy. Podcastbranding.co. Of course, big thanks to our good friend, Dan Lefebvre over there, based on a true story, based on a true story podcast.com. Big week this week, uh, JFK, LBJ. I don't know why all those guys got three letters for their names, but they did. JFK, LBJ, the pianist are all out on the website. Check it out if you want to get kind of an overview. It was in history. It was a the, this November, this last week of November is big, big week. So check it out today, based on a true story podcast.com and Dan Thanks for your sponsorship. Yeah, there's uh, the other thing I can do is if I want to on this screen, I clicked a button and now we should have in theory. There it is. I saw it for a second. Yes, we have a little subscribe oh, button and click the bell. Nice. So you can, um, the other thing, and this is you where get that animation from is that something you can just download? Is that an I, open? I got that from Invato Elements, which is um, a it's a subscription thing, but you get access to. Lots of B-roll video, if you ever wanted to use that, uh, sound effects, uh, royalty-free music. I want to say it's like, I got it on a Black Friday deal years ago, and now I'm paying, it's over, it's like 120 bucks a year, and I was kind of like, oh, I should use that more, because I'm not, and I was like, either cancel it or get out of there, and when I was over there, I was like, oh, look, subscribe button, so uh, that's a, a handy little tool. And then the other thing that I haven't quite figured out yet 
is like in the event that somebody gave, well, first of all, I have that set up to where it's supposed to take the subscribe thingy off the screen and it didn't. But if somebody ever gave us a super chat, in theory, there we go. I've got it set up to where money on the screen is now falling. And what I don't understand is how I can only do that. I have a, in my stream deck, I have it set up to play this video thing. It's green screen, so it's cool. I can go in, in Ecamm and go, okay, this is green screen. Get out the the uh, the green part. And it only works on this screen. Like if I were to to go to just me and then try that, it won't work. And I haven't quite figured out how to make some of these buttons, like they'll work on whatever scene I'm at. And then I tried stuff. It's it's just called the learning curve. You know, that's that's is there, what's... Is your code you're writing behind this? To no, this it's just, you not- go into Stream Deck... And what's really cool about Ecamm is Ecamm knows, you know, hence Ecamm Live is really the full name of the software. So they know a lot of people are going to be using this tool. And so you can add, I guess, like a plugin or whatever it is. But there's a whole bunch of Ecamm stuff that just connects to e- to uh, Stream Deck. And so you have the Stream Deck software where you can go in and say, okay, first do this, then do this, or, or you know, in the case of sound effects, Let's let you know, make David Lee say something, you know. Whoa! So, Whoa! you know, you can have it do all this stuff. It's just a matter of there is still a little bit of a learning curve. Like I said, I can't get, I can, uh, when we switch questions, well, I should probably turn that off too. That's my other computer letting me know that I have mail or something. But uh, like when we switch questions, it just added a marker. And so I could say, hey, our next question is this behind the scenes. That just made a text file with a timestamp. And so if I wanted to, if I had that screen up, I could actually type in what the question is that we're doing now. It's just in the other, but it's, it's just, there's like, I'm, I'm 95% of the way there on some of this stuff. The other thing I found out, I've been dragging comments to the screen. If I just click on this one from Randy, if I just click on this one, okay, I guess I do have to to drag and drop them. I thought there was a way I could just drag them. He says, I loved Ecamm Skype call recorder. Yep. Too bad they've given up and abandoned it. Yeah, they've, well, they've, they've kind that of. That seems like a lifetime ago. The, the Ecamm's, uh, you know, yeah. Skype. Rec- we always talked about that. The best, what's the best way to record Skype? Skype, and, uh, yeah. Ecamm and all those things. And boy, I, if there's one thing that took a departure it, during the pandemic, that was Skype. <laughs> like it had every, I mean, it, it ruled the web, the, oh, uh, the man the for years. Space. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was by far the most popular way I think to record online and it absolutely just fell off a cliff. Now, Microsoft didn't do a lot to help, but it absolutely fell off a cliff. Yeah. The other button I have here is what, what was the comment you just showed? Sorry. I was, yeah, I was, I was going to, no, I was going to throw it back here. I thought I could with a button. Uh, I love my stream deck says Randy black. Oh. I have folders with different apps and tasks. My favorite is adding my Mac OS shortcuts. Yeah. And they're one click away. So that's, there's this guy, I wish I could remember his name, but he looks like a church organist. He has, I think, three or four stream decks in front of him, and he has two uh, stream deck pedals. So he's, he's playing with his feet and his hands. And my whole thing is, what kind of hub does this guy have? that he's plugging all these things in. I'm like, that's all, all of those are USB. And I'm like, okay, well, there's one, two, there's five USB. So you must have like mega hub or something to, uh, to have that yeah, go. What would you even, what are the foot pedals to? It's again, whatever, like one was. Is he Phantom of the Opera? I mean, is this like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? Well, I know he does tutorials. He has some sort of academy and some of it is, and that's where I plan on using this more is for making videos. Uh, it's really easy to to switch where, you know, if I think if I do this, it will turn, nope, it's on another screen, but I can turn on and off different views and things like that. We were talking about, before we hit record, by the way, that's a horrible thing to say on a podcast, by the way, what I just said before we but, press record, because now oh. everybody in the chat room is like, oh, great, we missed all the fun stuff. Thanks, Dave. Oh, man. Um, uh, Tim O'Brien, uh, O'Brien, Tim Bryan says, uh, I'm making him Irish. Timothy, yes. Uh, I got a good deal from AppSumo on Vista Create for social media posting. I'm using it for two of my podcasts. Well, they, I almost stayed away from AppSumo just because I knew it was going to hurt my wallet. Um, and is it just me or everything on AppSumo right now is kind of the same thing? It's all AI, 
automatically. It just seemed like, you know, I was like, okay. And it's either, it's either a course builder, a lot of social media stuff, SEO, automatic writing. There wasn't much every now and then a calendar tool will come up. So, but like in Tim's case, that's a social thing. So, and I guess what other categories are there? Chris Stone says you can program multiple tasks with hotkeys on the stream deck. I did that. Uh, If we wanted to, like maybe when we get down to the 15 minute mark, I can do this. Nope. Because that put back the last comment. Uh, Look, I'm just turning off everything. It's supposed to, that's one buggy thing. I I made a, it's supposed to put a 15 minute timer. And hence, like I said earlier, it's, um, it's Dave going through the learning curve with hotkeys on the stream deck. So for StreamYard users, yeah, as much as I love Ecamm, that doesn't mean I hate StreamYard. You can use it to change views in your browsers during a recording or a yeah, live stream. Just, yeah. It just yeah. you replicate the keys, the the you know the the hot keys for it. Yeah, that's it. Rich got the guy's name. Um, his name is Alec Johnson. Is the Stream Deck organist guy. Yeah, he's <laughs> it's it's a sickness for him. A real, and that's the guy. A, he wears a mask <laughs> on his half now. <laughs> but that was. Um, that was when I saw that guy, I'm like, uh, well, if I'm going to learn stream deck, uh, you know, that seems to be the guy he's, you know, it is the sickness for him. Um, yeah. Dave says uh, here that Microsoft uh, strips Skype for parts for its chat. Kind of sure feels that way. I, I think more abandon it than they forgot. They owned it at some point. They're like, well, it's running. We're not going to, if you open up your Skype today, if you haven't opened it up in a while, it doesn't look, I mean, it looks exactly the same. And it would work exactly the same, except you have 10,000 spam bots now trying to talk to you on like they, since they abandon it, there's really no security. I, I wouldn't open it by the way. Uh, but, but there's like, there's very little security around it. I'm not saying it's insecure. I just wouldn't, I'd be very, very careful if I contacted anybody on it. It literally just got forgotten. They went a hundred percent on teams, right? That was the, yeah. That was the direction they went in March 2020. They were like, Skype who? We are all teams. <laughs> and so all teams and all the time. Teams yeah. was awful in 2020. It's, it's you know, depending upon w- what you like and what you don't like. I mean, they're trying to make it the hub for all communication stuff there at Microsoft. It's funny. Nobody talks about recording on Teams. That's not one of those things. People, You never hear somebody say, oh, yeah, I'm using Teams to record for my podcast, right? That just does not. From from what the the podcasters conscious you know hive mind, that's just not a phrase you hear very often. Is oh yeah, I'm using Teams for that. So, two yeah, it's it's been long forgotten, and and I think Microsoft to do whatever it can to close it down. They they're not very good at shutting. Unlike Google, Microsoft is terrible at actually closing things out at at, at you know deprecating them or or stop using them. I imagine we'll have another ten years of Skype. Before it goes anywhere, you know, it's probably the backbone for a few things that nobody knows about. But, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interested to, it would be, I'm sure there's a survey out there of who's, what tools folks are using now for recording. It'd be interesting to see what that, where that market share is today. I don't, I don't know it right off the top of my head. Well, here, this is, we're going to do this just for giggles because we have a question now from Jason Bryant. And Jason asks, um, oops, I hit the wrong comment. It's his previous well, that's one. That's the problem with learning all these new <laughs> these tools, There you right? go. Um, his Mac Studio arrived a week early. That's a good problem to have. Uh, now the slow start to load software. What do most people do with a new Mac? Uh, do you start new or do you migrate from the old Mac? He says, I'm starting new. I don't yeah. know. J- Jimmy, is that yeah, the? I'd, yeah, I'd start. I would start new if you can't. There's a there's a difference with I think with your PC or Mac versus your phone. There's so many things that so many more things you use your phone for other than just you know computational stuff. You've got all the contacts and all the messages and all those things. If you're going iPhone to iPhone or even Android to Android or even iPhone to Android, there's some there's some tools now you can use that'll just migrate all those things across for you. It doesn't bring everything, but it brings most of the important things that you don't want to have to rebuild again, especially good on the iPhone. My wife just got a new Pixel 8 and she did it from a Pixel 6 to a Pixel 8 and she loved it. She said it worked great. So my recommendation is on phones, yeah, use the conversion software on your PC, either Mac or this would uh, definitely on Windows start 
new. Yeah. Do not try to do any kind of backup and recovery. It, you just, you, you, you implement a lot of messy things. Make sure you get your codes, you know, your software codes. By the way, that's a probably a good thing to keep in a file somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Whenever you buy a new piece of software, take the activation code and put it in a file somewhere that's getting backed up. So you can just go in, reinstall the software, put the activation code, boom, you're off to the races. Some places you need, some places you need to go and actually deactivate it on the website so you can reactivate it on a new PC. That's for some pieces of software, but definitely start over on Windows and Mac. Yeah, I'm I'm realizing probably in 2024, my, my PC is five years old, maybe a little older, and it's starting to like, I'm running out of hard drive space and I'm moving things and I'm like, you know what, it's probably in another year or two, I'm like, it's going to be a little well, too old. Dave, you might, like, you may benefit before you just toss a PC, uh, get the files that you need. Those should be backed up and safe right. somewhere anyway. Blow that thing away. Windows has a pretty easy um, like restart tool that you can go yeah. in there and say, hey, wipe this thing out, wipe all the data off it, let it reload Windows. Try that before you just ditch it because yeah. you still the hardware may still be fine. You just may have a jammed up. I mean, after about three or four years, depending upon how you use Windows, the registry gets all messy. And yeah, yeah there's tools you can use to keep that up to date and that kind of stuff. But it just gets slow. Yeah. And so it's not a bad idea to, to about every two years, just reinstall windows. That's why I don't customize anything on my desktops. Cause that way I can just blow it away, <laughs> start over, not have to worry about it for the most part. Yeah. You're in for a couple hours of work to reinstall some things, but could give new life to that hardware. Yeah. DR says she picked up resound. Um, the jury's still out on this one. I think I bought this one a while back. If I remember right, this is something where is that the one that's a cleanup? It's kind of like an alphonic kind of thing. She says, I'm going to utilize my 60 days before I decide to return it. I want to, I want it to give me multiple tracks instead of just a single track. That must not be what I'm thinking of then. Uh, that is something I did buy. I bought, there's a company, I'll have to fire up my Hindenburg behind the scenes here, called um, Accentize. And they have a D room. Um, then they have Dialogue enhancement. And what this does, it's kind of interesting, is it there's like a noise reduction, there's a compressor, and then my favorite part is you can turn on a tool that will automatically adjust the EQ. And I love this for when I get, you know, like I'm doing a, the question of the month is this month at the School of Podcasting. And I kind of want everybody's EQ to sound the same. I don't want somebody to be really bassy and then somebody's really shrill. And so I can put this on my master track. So everybody goes through it. And that's a pretty handy tool. And then I, the one I like, though, is I, uh, I have a tool from a company called Acon called Deverberate. And I think that's probably, aside from, A, there was Adobe Enhance, which is no longer free. I, they give you like 20 minutes. Like, like okay, thanks for nothing. Um, and it, it's I like it because you can... You basically go in and say, here, listen to this, and then you can adjust how much of the reverb it takes out. And so what I've been doing is removing reverb with that and then using this other thing from Accentize called D-Revive, or I'm sorry, DX Revive Pro. And what that kind of does is it takes crappy sounding audio that you've de-reverberated, which a lot of times pulls out some of the upper end kind of makes it what and kind of just puts it back. Yeah. So it's, mm. I, I have found, and this is what I, I, when I do editing, I charge by the minute and I just tell my customers, if you hand me crappy audio, your bill's going to double. Like, because when you, it's, it's cool that you can throw on all these plugins and it'll like, you put garbage in and you get listenable out. But when you have to run your audio through these, you're exporting your final MP3 It'll take like a half hour because it's, you know, I've got my one client. I've told him a million times. I'm like, dude, you got to work on your mic technique. You got major plosive problems. And he's like, yeah, yeah. But he's recorded like, you know, 15 episodes ahead with plosive problems. I'm like, okay, well, I can take those out. It just, uh, you know, it's going to take longer to export your files. So uh, DR says, I have deverberate. 
um, but I don't know how to use it. Uh, you know, Azure uh, in Hindenburg is why I use it. I, I turn it on, click on the learn button and let it go for a bit and then unclick the learn button. And then on the right hand side, there's a knob for the reverb and just turn it to zero and away it goes. So it's, I don't know how they're doing that. I know it sometimes as with every kind of noise reduction or whatever cleanup tool you're using, if you turn it like to a hundred percent, it always gets a little wonky and there's, you end up with this like super fast slap back echo. So I don't know what they're doing. So it's like, okay, turn it to like 98% and uh, that will, will work. So, um, so yeah, lots of fun tools to, uh, to get involved. I imagine in the future, they'll use actual voice samples to fix some of those things where you could be like, Hey, is there a good audio recording of this person? Let's learn on the good one. Hey, now I have enough. Then apply it and actually kind of, kind of write over the the bad audio with what's being said. I mean, think about it. If you could, had, if you had a good transcript, so like feed bad audio in, get a transcript, fix the transcript, and then feed the audio, the voice file in that says, "Hey, here is a good." Here's what it should sound like, and then let let it. Pro- I don't want to call this AI because this is really just a this is really just an algorithm, right? It's not really right. AI, but go in and then write over the top of that with some good sound and make that good. I, I think we're probably pretty close to that. that they that should, do that. I've given yeah. really bad audio, like horrendously bad audio, to Descript Studio Sound. And what's interesting because Studio Sound is another one that's really amazing, and I've heard it. Uh, like the audio was so bad it had to guess at what the person was saying and it tries to fill it in. So you've known they've done the whole clone thing behind the scenes. And I'm like, wait, that's not what that guy said. Like it's making up words. And I was like, okay, that's what I was like. That's because I was wondering, I'm like, how do they make it? Like they just take all the noise away. And I'm like, oh, they're, they're kind of robo fixing the voice. And, and so I was like, well, that's, it's definitely no more reverb, but um, that's not what that person said. Or all of a sudden they have a really bad stutter. It's like, but that's where you just have to realize there there comes a time when that file is DOA. Like, you know, you, you can't give me really, really just horrible, unlistable audio and then go, yeah, can you make this sound pristine? I'm like, no, no, I think no, we there's can't. A day. I think there's a day that's yeah. coming when it, what the, the problem, what I see today and all these audio processors is they just process the file once. Yeah. And I, I, we almost need like multiple passes over this thing. So like go through this thing first, like, like I said, go, let's go through it and get a solid. Cause once we have a solid transcript, then there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, I imagine there'll be a day where you'll read, you'll go in or you could feed it a whole bunch of good audio for you. And it would build like a large, language model of your voice, of your own voice. This would be a perfect example of how to use LLMs for your for individuals, right? So I could, I'd grab something, read a whole bunch of things, or feed it a whole bunch of good audio and say, okay, train on my voice. And then I'm in a situation where maybe uh, the, the audio was bad and I can say, hey, use this large language model of just me, fix the audio, that's that, that fix this chunk or apply it to the whole thing. I don't think we're that far away from, from that kind of, that it just would take a couple passes, right? You'd have to go through, pass through, Hey, here's some samples. Is this the way we should do it? Kind of deal. I bet some of that's already happening. Well, Chris is mentioning here, Descript has an overdub where you can adjust the transcript and replaces the audio with the new words. Yeah. It's okay for a word or two, but the inflection is still wonky. Inflection is hard. This is yeah. the this is the next thing is to get the inflection right. You can hear you go on YouTube and you hear the computer read stuff that, you know, someone oh, yeah. created a script and the computer read stuff. Within about I don't know, 10 seconds, you're like, "Okay, that's a it and it's not the wonky computer sounding hello, my name is Jim, you know, not that." Right. It just they don't have any they don't have the right proper inflection, but I would imagine with enough training, this is where the large language models would help training your own voice to understand the inflections. I probably the way I speak, I probably say the words the same way and inflect them a certain way, very similar all the time. And so I imagine a, a trained model could pick up on that and give good inflection. How weird would that be, Dave, to hear oh. those? inflections it exists it's in alpha right now in 11 labs uh mike russell from music radio creative and so what he did was he put his wife's voice 
on because he has her cloned and then says something like Mike Russell is the absolute best husband ever. And out she came. So you could basically make everybody sound like Chandler Bing, you know, can I be any more funny? You know? So, and I was like, Ooh, and that, I don't think that's available public yet. And he's got like, he's Mike is all over AI. Like nobody's business. He's got, he's using 11 labs. He's, like a chat GPT guru and this whole nine yards. And nice. so nice. Um, yeah. a lot of fun. So uh, we did have one question I wanted to hit in theory. I have hit the button, but I thought this was a decent question because uh, we've talked about, you know, you want to be consistent and things like that. So what has a more negative effect on a weekly series? And I don't know that there's a, a bad episode or no episode. He says, what's the right decision? Put out an episode where you feel the energy was flat and it isn't your best or miss a week. Building momentum and all that from consistency seems to be crucial, but is it worth skipping a week if you don't think you have an amazing episode? And I was like, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Any any thoughts on that, Jim? Well, how many episodes have you done, Dave, where you thought it was bad and somebody else was like, oh, that was the best ever? That's actually right? what's going to be my point. I'm like, I've yeah. had, yeah. I forget what it was, a couple weeks. I, like, I wasn't sure the David Hooper thing was going to go over. I brought David on to talk about an episode he did. So David and I were listening to his episode. And I'm like, this could be really weird because people are tuning in to hear me. And there is me commenting on Dave. It was just a, it was an experiment. And I had a number of people go, A, that was really creative, and B, that was kind of cool. It was very meta, you know. And so I wasn't sure how that would go over. And I have I've had many episodes that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do this episode. This is gonna be awesome and people are gonna love it. And it's nothing but crickets. And then you do one that you go, you're kind of like, mm, you're like you're you're struggling to hit the publish button because you're not sure if it's gonna work or not. And then it would work. So I have always said though, if if you're like not done with an episode and you think it's going to be good, I would rather get an on time or a late show late in quotation marks. I'd rather get a late show that was good than an on time show that was mad. Like the, the thing that I will not listen to if I hear somebody go, Hey, welcome to the show. You know, it's Thursday. We're not really sure what we're going to talk about, but I promised you a show every Thursday. So here we go. I'm like, Nope, sorry. Cause that's, that just sounds like they're going to riff off the top of their head. And I'm like, that usually doesn't, doesn't work great. So mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, so, but yeah, uh, I think I, you know, is a flat episode. Say it really is bad though. Yeah. Like you say it just didn't, you argued with the guest or, you know, I don't know. I don't know what makes something that bad that nobody want to listen to it, but just say it is bad. I, I think it's, if you're really uncomfortable with it, skip the week, just skip it. Nobody's, nobody's going to die, you know, because you skip the week <laughs> of podcasting. Yeah, it's sure. just not going to, it's just not going to happen. It's and it's okay. It's listen. <laughs> I think most podcasters think like, "Oh, I missed a week." Everybody unsubscribe. Oh. And you're like, "No, that 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 doesn't." Most people are behind. Yeah. To begin, with, right? And then the others are like, "Oh, it, it didn't show up." I'm just listening to other podcasts. Listen, for the most part, no one is w sitting there hitting refresh, 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 refresh. Now that's not always true you will have some listeners who are fanatic from from time to right. time if i make a mistake and by sunday home gadget geeks doesn't appear in the in the you know in the download um i'll, I'll have a guy who always says hey jim i haven't seen the show yet right which is super handy because every yeah. once in a while i'll make a mistake or whatever right so you do have some right but it's not like you're going to get a mass exodus of people like relax people you're not yeah. that important okay i mean that get, Rogan can probably even mess a week and, and people would be like, well, maybe you just took the week off or whatever, yeah. you know? So, yeah. yeah so don't, that. that's the other thing is when you do come back, please don't start off your show with an apology. That always right. like, you do realize right. that like six months from now, nobody's going to like, why is he apologize? I don't know. It was here with yeah. the other ones. So, and uh, yeah. always remember, of course, no one will punch you in the face. Exactly. So you know, we, I listened to a podcast and the, one of the hosts two two you know, there's two hosts and one of them took 10 weeks off, was super busy at work, just yeah. took, they, and they did a, they did a few, um, you know, he had some fill in folks, yeah. you know, that jumped in and, but they definitely slowed things down and they came right back and they're just like, okay, let's just do this thing. So 
Yeah, a lot a lot easier, a lot better. I mean, we take some weeks off, and for the most part, has yeah. anybody ever punched you in the face? No, not even okay. tried. So okay. <laughs> um, Dan has said, as a podcast listener, I don't even know when most of the shows I listen to come out. Ask the podcast coach is the only exception since it's live. I appreciate the on-demand nature of the podcast to listen at any time. Yeah, that's I have people at Libsyn that freak out, like freak out. They're like, hey, I published, I had it set to publish at nine o'clock and it's nine oh seven and it's not in Apple. And it's because they don't realize that and and this isn't a Libsyn thing, it's captivating. Like when you publish, it means your file is available. Like it is public, but it's not going to show up in Apple or Spotify or whatever until they come around to see if there's anything new. Yeah. So when you publish an episode, it can be anywhere from 20 minutes. Spotify, the last week and a half has been slower than usual. And so it might be three hours, five hours. And I always say, think of Netflix. You're watching insert show here. You're watching, uh, what's the one about uh, Virgin? You're watching Virgin River on Netflix in the living room. You're like, you know, what? I'm going to finish watching this in the bedroom. So you turn off the, the, the living room, you go into the bedroom, you turn it on, you just get nothing but this red spinning N. Okay. So is there a problem with Netflix? No. Cause it, it just worked two seconds ago in the kitchen. There's something wrong with either your router your TV or something. And so if you see that the episode is in Apple, but it's not in Spotify or it's in this app, but not another one, you know, your media host is working. Cause if your media host wasn't working, it wouldn't show up anywhere. And no, don't, if, if you're promising nine o'clock, don't publish at nine o'clock, publish that thing at eight yeah. or eight thirty. So the, the world has time to catch up. We, we have one, we promise at Gallup, we have one we promise on Wednesdays and I publish that thing at 2 AM on Mondays just to get it there. <laughs> that way they can grab some that, you know, they can grab some, we don't worry about it being a perfect, like, Oh no, they all have to come out. Like there's a timestamp and there's a, there's a release police on this thing. Now just publish it. It will be fine. People will pick it up when they're ready for it. Like I said, most people are just doing it as they go and they're just waiting for new things on their player. Right. Yeah. So I don't, there, don't obsess. there are a bunch of episodes on my, you know, on my phone right now that are from weeks ago. You know, yeah. it's like Dan yeah. said, I have no yeah. idea when that was just, Oh, there's a new thing and I'll get to it when, and that's where titles really come into play. A lot of times I listen to it based on what the title is. Then if it's like, you know, kind of boring title versus one that I'm like, Ooh, I want to hear that one. So awesome. So uh, we do have another question. And this one, of course, is from the awesome chat room. So if you ever want to join us, we're at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live every Saturday from 1030 to noon. And this is from uh, Dr. Brad Miller from cancerincomedy.com is the new podcast up and running now. And uh, he says, it's a different topic. I'm looking to hardwire my setup. So I'm not so Wi-Fi dependent. I uh, can't seem to figure out the Ethernet. Uh, do I need to uh, get the Xfinity people in here to install something? Do you have any suggestions? And I was like, oh, holy cow. And now, oh, he's been waiting for this. It's time for Jim to get his nerd on. This makes me happy. Go, go back to the, the screen with you and me. I like to see your face when I'm there. We go. When I'm talking about these kinds of things. It's a little alarming just to see me. Uh, so, Brad, uh, you you need to check your okay. So that you have an Xfinity uh, modem, right? So whatever's coming in, how cable or whatever you're using is coming into a modem, and that you have some kind of setup capability with that modem to broadcast the Wi-Fi. I imagine that's what you're doing now. By the way, dirty little secret. I don't know about Xfinity, but with Cox Communications, they actually use, it, depending on the modem you have, they're actually broadcasting to your network, to, I mean, to your neighborhood. And people can find a public network in your neighborhood using your uh, using your modem. It is... Um, you, you don't pay for that bandwidth that comes in through a separate channel and it, it, it does its things. But this is how they, like Cox says, oh, we have thousands of connection points, you know, in your city. Yeah, because they're using your modem to get that done. Again, I don't know if Xfinity does that, but Cox does that for sure. So um, you uh, check the back of your modem. There should be an Ethernet out right? That little port, that that RJ45 is what we call it, that little port you'd stick it in like a, a network cable. If you have that out, 
then you have the ability, and I think most modems do. I, I don't know of any that don't. You're ready to go on that, and you should be able to take a network cable, and then Dave, show what I've got up on the screen. And you can buy a pretty inexpensive uh, um, switch. There's managed and unmanaged. Don't get don't get a managed one. You don't it, starting new. You don't want to have to worry about that. Unmanaged will do the job. Come out of the back of the modem with a network cable. Plug into this, and then you can run. And with this particular switch, you can run five or six or seven more devices wired. You don't have to buy the switch. You could come right out of the modem, go right into your Mac or whatever you have there, or whatever, one computer. You can go one-to-one -one out of the modem, out of the back, and, um, and, and get that done. What's nice about this is you can then have other devices. Maybe you have an Xbox or you got a PlayStation or whatever. The consideration on this is to figure out where do you put this in relation to the hardware that you have. Running long uh, Ethernet cables, not a big deal in a house. You can run them all over the place if you want. Um, sometimes it makes sense to run one long cable, depending upon where your modem is, to this switch and then come off the switch. Or sometimes it may make more sense to run a short cable, come off the switch, and then uh, short cables to the to the devices that are around you. Most modern devices all have an Ethernet port, right? And uh, and so you don't have to worry about. And it's how it'd be hard if you were buying new cables today. It would be hard to buy new cables that aren't that aren't compatible with these newer type switches. So it really is fairly plug and play on the network side of things. You don't have to set up anything or configure anything. You're going to come out of the back of your modem. You're going to need to make sure that port is enabled and is working. Sometimes Xfinity would turn that off that you could call their customer support, get some help on that if you want. Once that port's enabled, plug that in and then whatever devices, whether you use a switch like this or you go, directly into your PC, um, it'll just get a network address and then it should serve the internet. And their client support should be able to help you if you have any problems along those lines. We absolutely recommend you don't use Wi-Fi if you're recording video. It's just as audio is no problem because that, that bandwidth is just a little sliver, right? But anytime you're doing video, Dave and I are pushing a lot today with the video that's going out. I would never recommend you do this kind of thing over Wi-Fi. Dave, everybody I've ever interviewed and you know they're on Wi-Fi, you just you just know when it's going bad. Like it's stuttering or the camera locks up or you know you get you, you get some digital pixelization of, of sorts. So always better I think to be wired. Dave, would you add anything would you add anything to that? No, it's a lot easier than you think it is because I have I think the exact same thing you put on the screen. Um, that's how I run. I, it basically comes out of my modem, goes into that switch, and then one goes to you know the Mac, the other one goes to the PC, uh, one goes to my Wi-Fi, um, all sorts of fun stuff. So it's the, it's literally plug and play. Brad is saying, what about the configuration on the Mac itself? When you plug it in, the Mac will pick it up. Yeah. And you'll see uh, up in the upper right-hand corner on the toolbar, you'll see a symbol that says it recognizes that it's now recognizing that the kind of the cool thing about a Mac is you can run both at the same time. You can run wireless and yeah. wired at the same time on that. If like, if you have your watch, you don't have to, but like my watch connects via Wi-Fi to the Mac and some other things. So, um, you know, you can have both of those. You can be connected at the same time. Definitely. If you're not wired, you're not using the fastest capability. If you are wired, you are, so get, get out there, give that a try. You can, you can try it. I mean, for the cost of an Ethernet cable, you can try it and get that started. Maybe just come right out of the modem, go right into the Mac if it's close enough, and, uh, and get that part figured out. The learning curve is not terribly steep on that. For most people, it just works, unless you've shut that off. But give that a yeah. try. Craig from uh, livewellandflourish.com, running the cable is the only difficult part, but even that can be made easy in, in certain situations. Yeah, and you can't plug in an RJ45 or an Ethernet cable. You can't plug it in wrong. <laughs> There's only one way it goes in. As, as, you, as you look at those, you know, it's got a little bump in the top, and then yeah. the cable, you just pinch it, and it comes out. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly bulletproof um, cable. Nothing else looks like it. it doesn't, you wouldn't accidentally plug it into a... USB, or you wouldn't plug it into an HDMI because those are all flat and this is square. So it's an, listen, it's an old, old protocol. It, RJ or the Ethernet has been around almost as long as the internet. 
And so uh, the the stuff for it is pretty solid. It was harder years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago to get it all figured out. Those layers are all seamless now. It's pretty easy. Yeah. And um, Brad says, cool. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I, I had recent video recording problems and glad you got your, your nerd fix. So. That will, uh, yeah, it's always, that's, that's all. <laughs> yeah. always nice to get the nerd on. Give it, give it a try. Plenty of YouTube videos about this as well. So if you're, you just put in, go to YouTube, put in your modem and say it's network setup. So Xfinity, what my modem is, network setup. Someone I bet has gone through the whole thing for you. Just watch that and you'll get uh, more, more information than you ever hoping for. The next question that we have, especially this time of year, is if you're looking to to start a podcast, now may not be the best time, um, really. And that's not – well, that is the one I wanted, but that's not what I wanted to do now. I wanted to do this. So you should see Apple Notes. Yep. Um, I love the fact that Ecamm gives me a little preview in the bottom right-hand corner. I need to launch a podcast next week. That uh, That is not a good sentence to say right now. Um, uh, up, I'm uploading to Apple Podcasts via Acast. On Apple Podcasts Connect, it, it gives me a link to my podcast, but when I click the link on my phone, it says it can't connect. That's really two different problems. And when I click it on my browser windows, it says it's not available in the UK iTunes store. Can confirm podcast is available in all locations. The status for my podcast is currently ready to release in, am, am, in Amber. I think he means a cat. I don't know. I've not released an episode yet. Oh, there's the problem. But yet I have released a trailer. Oh, so you do have an episode, so that's good. So it should still be able, should be able to my pie. I should edit these before I put these live. But this is exactly how he said it. Uh, should be able to my podcast on Apple, right? Yes. Any advice would be much appreciated. So what happens in some cases with this is I love the fact that Apple gives you a link. Now, it is kind of odd that you can't, like when you click that, that the right thing isn't happening. But um, you want to copy that and put that link on your website. And in, in Apple Podcasts, you should be able to see, like, is it seeing your episode? Make sure if there's a button at the top right of Apple, it's podcastconnect.apple.com. Um, you want to click publish because eventually it's kind of weird because you you put all this information into your your media host, like frequency and do you have third-party rights? You put all that stuff in, then you throw your feed into Apple Podcast, and it asks you, do you have access to all the third-party stuff? And you're like, yes, yes, I do. And what's your schedule? And you're like, I just put it in the feed. Why are you asking me these questions again? It's kind of weird. And so you have to put those again, and then you have to click. Uh, uh, there's a couple things in Apple Podcasts you have to click, and then you say save and then publish. And But if you have that link at the bottom, once they give you the link in the bottom right-hand corner, that should work. Now, what happens sometimes is it's weird. You have the direct link to the file, to the file, to the show. And yet, if you search for it, it won't show up. And that's something to do. I, I honestly don't quite get this. I know I hear people say, oh, well, it hasn't been indexed yet. So somehow it's in the database, but there's a list of what's in the database somewhere. And so when you search, it won't show up but it will in about a month. So I'm just like, take that link and put it on your website. Same thing for Spotify and Amazon and Google while it's around. Um, but that's probably what's going, because if you have an episode, what I see a lot of people do is they will get there. And, and again, here we are going back to timing. Like we have to time the launch. And so they'll submit their show to Apple and then later they'll turn on their episodes. And I'm like, yeah, you can't submit a show to Apple without at least a trailer. You have to have one episode and that episode can be a trailer. It has to have something in it for it to, uh, to show up. So it's kind of tricky. Dave, good, a good idea. You just, you just mentioned something. Is it a good idea now to go into YouTube and make sure you have, like we know you, you mentioned Google podcast is going right. away. I see that banner every week when I go in there, you know, it's one yeah. of the, tabs i i use uh um uh, you know i use a indexing or it's not really right i use a uh bookmark service to and i bookmark all these all these uh, podcast sites and in one click i can open them all right so there's a bunch of different ways to do that in your browser but that's that's the way it, raindrop.io i think is what i use for that hmm. and um so i have it open up podcast connect and stuff but i just close 
But I, I've been watching the Google Podcast. If you haven't logged into your Google Podcast account in a while, you might want to because there's a banner that says, hey, friends, in 2024, this goes away, and it's going to YouTube. So do you think it's smart now to go in and get your get some kind of something set up for YouTube so it's there and it's working and you're not doing a last minute? What do you think, Dave? Well, What's if you're about? using if you're using Libsyn, you can set up Libsyn to convert your audio to video and send it to YouTube. That's that's the best solution. You can if you're not using Libsyn or something that submits it to YouTube. Because then you can go into YouTube, make a playlist with the same name as your podcast, and then dub the a podcast, and it's now a YouTube podcast is what I call that. And so that will get you there. Your audience can, and this is where it gets nerdy, your audience can copy and paste the RSS feed into YouTube music, but that, I mean, now we're back to Patreon. Like, if you've ever try to explain to somebody, no, no, don't click on the feed, copy it. And then it's, it's easy to do, but if you, it, it's easy for us because we're podcasters and we understand what an RSS feed is. So I'm going to start using a tool called subscribe on Android, which basically you put in your feed and it gives you a link. And when people click on the link that subscribe on Android does, it lists like pocket casts and all these other tools. And then, cause in theory, your audience, granted, if they're using Google, they they probably don't have another podcast app that they're using, but at least here are some of the most popular ones. I was going to start recommending good pods, and I probably still wear it well. It's got a lot of community stuff involved with it for the Android side, because I just think Spotify, I, I adore Spotify as a music service. I wish they would quit playing with podcasting, because you're really, really good at listening to stuff. Like, I've been listening to Getty Lee's, uh, the bass player from Rush. He has an audio book and man, holy cow, we haven't really got to him yet. He's just talking about his parents and his parents survived the Holocaust. When you get firsthand knowledge of that stuff, you're like, oh, wow. It turns out Nazis were bad. (laughs) Yeah. Holy cow. I mean, it's, it's wow. So I love Spotify for listening to music and now audio books, but as a podcast thing, I see, I am a list guy. There, there are Q people. This is where you go, oh, I'm going to make a big pile of podcasts. They call that a Q. And then you you chew up your Q. And when something new comes in, you go, hey, add this to the pile. I like smart playlists. So when I subscribe to a show, like I have a comedy playlist. I have a podcast playlist. I have a health playlist. And I have all these shows, and they just get funneled into these playlists. So Spotify is not a playlist kind of thing, at least not dynamically. They have them for, for music. And so... Uh, Good Pods kind of did an uh uh-oh, and I'm not holding it against them, but they decided, without really telling anybody, to use AI to enhance your description. And James Cridlin found out about this, and there was one show that was about domestic abuse, and they thought it was a dating show. Oh. Yeah, that's really like, ooh. So they have, they have, they, they put that out and then said, oopsie. So, but it is a pretty cool app. Um, so, um, so you got to be careful about letting AI take over some of those things. You know, I, it, you know, yikes. Yeah, the, the, the tricky part, because Randy said YouTube's RSS ingestion is extremely simple to set up. It is. It is. Very just, simple. Just never make a mistake. Because if you want to replace, and it's, this is where it's just YouTube. If you want to replace your now video, which is audio, on YouTube music or YouTube, you have to delete the old one and then upload it. Well, that's the exact same thing it is with video. So it's, it's really, it's, it's just YouTube with audio. And so my big thing is I'm, I'm dying for this to really, it's already rolled out. I, I have, I think the school of podcasting is on YouTube um, as a playlist. And I, I get less than 10 on that, on a regular, it's always, you know, Ooh, six, six, you know, six views or whatever. So, uh, I'm not anti, here's the thing that I I was thought about this the other day. I'm like, why am I somewhat, uh, anti YouTube? And I think it's because I work in tech support. Now when these other programs Mm -hmm. rolled out, you know, 10 years ago, I wasn't, it wasn't that big a deal, but now I have to put up with the people going, Hey, 
I need to fix this thing. How can I fix this in YouTube? And I got to go up. You got to go delete it. And then, well, I'm going to lose all my stats. Yep. And then I'm going to get the blame. And I'm like, no, it's, it's YouTube. They should do a pass through, but they're not because, well, they, you know, and the whole, you if you have, this is the weird one. If you have dynamic ads that are inserted, you can't do those. But if we thank our awesome supporters, that's fine. So it's, there's a lot of just weirdness over there, but it is easy. From what I understand, it's really easy to do. And uh, I need to probably go over and find a show I have that's one of those test shows and and do it and see what, you know, because I heard it's really easy. It's just a matter it's of- super easy. Yeah. It is. And sometimes I think they do it automatically for you. Like, I think they yeah. look for series of things and they're like, it's a podcast. We have some Gallup stuff I definitely did not enable as a podcast that got the podcast tag. And nah. I was like, oh. All right. Okay. I, that's, yeah. I mean, these were playlists for seasons and they were long enough to be a playlist. I didn't intend for them to be, get the podcast tag. They got the podcast tag. I'm uh, not sure I necessarily wanted those tagged as a podcast. Yeah. Now, I'm not, but here's the deal. I'm not doing anything with them. So they'll show up in it, whatever they show up in, in YouTube podcasting, whatever that is, they'll show up there if somebody clicks on them and plays them, good on them. Like they found them. That's awesome. They'll we'll, they'll figure out ways to get done. I don't. Some people get a little a little bananas about. Well, it's not the way I wanted them to listen to it. So it's like so you'd rather they not listen to it and listen to it exactly the way you think they should listen to it, or yeah. if they found it on accident, just call it advertising. Like I mean. I, I don't understand why we get so wrapped around the axle on some of these kinds of things. Well, I didn't want it there. Well, but someone's listening to it there. Like, be glad you got another listen on the thing. So I don't worry about YouTube so much. They're going to listen. They're a mess. They are an absolute legacy mess behind the scenes. They'll yeah. get some things figured out. Google has never been good at podcasting anyway. So I'm not sure it really matters, just to be honest. Yeah, uh, Randy says, with older shows I have online for archive purposes, I've picked up about 100 listens on YouTube in the last two weeks. Exactly. So more exposure is not a bad thing. Uh, Craig from livewellandflourish.com. YouTube views can be misleading. Be sure to check out how long people view and listen. Yes, sometimes that stat is disappointing. No, it is soul-crushing. Uh, <laughs> Five seconds. Five of, seconds. As long as it views. took him to click it off, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. but most abandoned quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we want to thank our awesome supporters because, you know, well, they're awesome. And so, uh, you know, you can go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And the show is also brought to you by the school of com, where you can uh, get courses, you can get coaching, you can get, and coaching means like unlimited. I had somebody this week, they're like, so like I can sign up like we could do like a monthly, like, or a weekly meeting. I go, yeah, if it's available. Absolutely. I had somebody, Paul Fenner from, um, the emotional balance sheet. He's a, a guy. He has uh triplets, I think it is. And it's all about financial and life balance and things like that. And for probably a good month and a half, we met every Monday. So you can do that. School of podcasting.com. Use the coupon code coach. Uh, this show runs on pod page. Um, I heard, uh, let's see, I was listening to the flow podcast. That's an Ecamm podcast. They love pod pod page. Um, I was listening to podcasting 2.0. Adam Curry's getting into pod page. All the cool kids are doing it. Try podpage.com is my affiliate link and learn podpage.com. will teach you how to learn it. Um, and then of course we've been talking about it today. Ask the podcast coach runs on Ecamm. If you want to check it out, support this show.com slash Ecamm. And Ecamm has two M's because, mmm, uh, it's good. So uh, if you need more Jim Collison, <laughs> just go over to the average guy.tv. It's so dumb and made him laugh. Excellent. Uh, so uh, there's that. And uh, of course, I'm hitting the wrong button again. Doggone it. The uh, spotlight supporter this week is the one and only. It is, uh, come on, I hit screen. Oh, this button, too many buttons. It's Max Prescott from aviationnewstalk.com. If you are in, if you're a pilot and you want to keep up with what's going on in the world of aviation, aviationnewstalk.com. He's on episode 303, which he talks about, you know this, Jim, the good old SR-22T crash. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. know about yeah. the SR-22T crash. All over YouTube. Yeah, it was in Shelbyville, Indiana, and why the Caps parachute matters. So check him out again, Aviation News. To- even, you know what? I might listen, just to listen about, I mean, we all love a good crash, so you, even yeah. if you're not and, a pilot. Well, it's not so much about the crash as it is about all the stuff behind it. Like, yeah. I, I listened to another guy, uh, the Blanco Lirio channel, and it's a lot like the aviation news that, that Max does. And they just get into the technical end of it. I mean, it's super cool to hear the passion of these guys talk about these things. And you don't get that. Li- it, listen, you don't get that in a sound bite on a news, on any news station. And these no. guys know their stuff. So make sure you check it out, Max. Well, that's the other thing I would think is you want to find out what happened so that, you know, it doesn't happen to, uh, to right. use. So thanks, Max, for uh, being an awesome supporter. And of course, you can be an awesome supporter by going to askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. Because if you're like, well, I like to do it, but you know, I don't want a monthly thing. Well, we have options over there that are not monthly if you just want to buy us a coffee or things of that nature. Askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. And uh, yeah, if you want to jump into the uh, the show, askthepodcastcoach.com slash question is... Jim, point above your head. Oh, right up there. Yeah, right, right there. Right there it is. So, right Don't you have a new Super Chat automation, too? If somebody, because that's another way you can support the channel, right? Super Chat? Yeah. It's, get, uh, it, what what it, happens if you give Super Chat? I'm not I just, I'm just one, I, one folk I, to see it. I think it automatically, A, will, I think it comes up in Ecamm. I, that's something yeah. I need to look at. But also, I can hit this button, and then, you know, money falls. So that's... uh. That looks really, that's another green screen thing. That's that either a, yeah. Um, Maybe we need to work on the money. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Craig says, I once flew from St. Louis to Seattle, spent the day listening to safety experts analyze plane crashes. I don't know if that's something you want to do while you're on a plane, you know, mm-hmm. and then flew back to St. Louis. Yeah, I bet it is an interesting experience. Holy cow. I think if you want to, the Blanco Lirio channel, the one I listen to, he's a pilot as well. So he does these, he talks about these incidents that happen. And the way he approaches flying, uh, it actually made me more comfortable with flying because you see what a pilot does. Uh, Any pilot who's doing anything from a licensed standpoint, and Christian Johnson, uh, the the guy behind Maple Grove Partners, he just recently uh, got his pilot's license. And you see all the training they have to have and then the methodical approach to flying. You know, if you did that for your car, you would never have a maintenance issue with your car ever. If you made sure the oil was changed all the time, the the tires yeah. got taken care of, like you were. And if you did like a pre-driving check, like pilots do, a, a, a you know, a, a that it almost things almost always go wrong in that world when people don't do their job. And, and a lot of pilots are very fanatical about that. So it watching their checklists the way we've talked about this before if podcasters would treat their podcast a little bit like they were flying Mm -hmm. we might have a few less problems in the podcasting space because you would have a checklist that you would go through before you would before you went live you'd have a checklist that you go through and you'd be like you, you know you'd put it on your on your lap and you'd look at it and okay did i do this did i do this did i do this most of the time we're just flying by the seat of our pants woohoo you know no pilot does that because you know why they're dead <laughs> yeah they crashed <laughs> there are some people that have done that they're called dead yes exactly yeah, they, they they self they self-select or they eliminate themselves so um yeah no i i great max thanks for for doing that that's some great stuff yeah it should be that you know headphones check uh tap microphone check you know yeah. um yeah. reboot yeah. the computer before the show check you know all that fun stuff to uh you know, because when you're up in the air, it's a bad time to figure out that, oh, wait, we forgot to check the tire pressure or whatever. Oh, you know. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, exactly. I didn't you know. fill oh, up the tank. Fuel? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to put fuel in here. I thought you were yeah. going to put the fuel in the, oh, <laughs> doggone it. Now uh, we're going to die. When, now you're looking for, and uh, oh, I didn't look for an emergency airport. I flew with this guy from Omaha to Colorado Springs one time. And I didn't realize it's a little Cessna. He the whole way along, he knew exactly where the next airport was, in mm. case something happened. He would he knew where it was, how to fly to it, and how far it was away. And so he'd be have his map out. And he'd be like, "Okay, we just left this airport. Now we're going to land at this airport." And he's telling me this as we're flying, you know. And it's comforting to know, like he knew if something the engine went out right there, 
he knew where where he was going to go to land. He was always thinking about that while he was flying. I'm sure when you're driving, you're not thinking about those things because you've got a podcast <laughs> on, yeah. you're staring at the car next to you, right? Some of those kinds of things. The next fun-filled question here is, I had not heard about this. Zencaster changed my plan. Um, I received an email this morning stating that effective today, my Creator Plus account has been downgraded to a hobbyist account since I'm not participating in any advertising programs with Zencaster. I'm incredibly frustrated since I checked in about this less than a month ago and they said, sure, you're currently a part of the Creator Network and so your account is on Creator Plus plan. No worries, there'll be no charges to the plan you currently have. While I reached out to see if I can get my Creator account reinstated, I want to get ahead of things and if they won't reinstate it. So we like Buzzsprout and don't want to move to Zencaster for hosting. Therefore, I would like to know what others are using to record their podcasts that's similar to Zencaster. Thanks in advance. So it sounds to me like in this case that what they did is they were on a program that, you know, it's free as long as you take advertising. That's how they stay in business. And when you don't take ads, you're just a drain on the system. So, you know, I, and this is one of those things, I think whoever you talk to, you will find somebody who loves it and hates it. So if you don't need video, there's clean feed. There's um, Squadcast is now part of Descript. And then there's Riverside. And so I know I've not had great experiences with Riverside. Uh, Craig from Live Well and Flourish has not had great experience with Squadcast. And in the early days, I was not a huge clean feed uh, person, but I know um, James and Sam over at uh, Pod News Weekly, they use clean feed and they don't seem to have a problem. So, you know, the the thing I see a lot in the different groups, and I, I get it because it's the holiday season and we're, we're trying to do as much as we can with as little amount of money as, as possible, but there just comes a time when you kind of have to go, yeah, you're going to, it's, you know, they're like, well, I'm trying to do it with, you know, a budget of five bucks. And you're like, is there any free slash cheap software that allows four separate inputs for four microphones via an audio interface? I use a UMC 404 Behringer. There is a name that I'm surprised Behringer has not, they kind of like, they were all about, uh, well, all podcasters were using their stuff because it was cheap. But then when people started designing things for podcasters, Behringer didn't kind of jump on board, at least as far as I know. But he's using this interface. Uh, plug that stuff into the PC with mics attached to the interface. What software will allow me to see mic 1, mic 2, mic 3, and mic 4 and record them all in different channels? Or is it possible? Or is it impossible? There's audacity. There's things like that. Just want to do it for the podcast. So like post-production, if someone's mic is bad, I can do something. I just want to be able to see the four mic audios moving on the screen, but on two separate layers. That's a weird word. Any ideas? If the app is mainstream and popular and costs like $20. And so to me, I'm like, the easiest way to record four microphones is to get the Zoom PodTrack P4. Ding, and ding, ding, ding. yeah, and so that's like, you know, 200 bucks. It's like, Now it's like 150. And I'm just like, you know, if your hobby is walking, you still got to buy shoes. If your hobby is Frisbee, you still got to buy the Frisbee, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that, yeah, you know, 150 bucks might be like a lot of money in your world. And I'm not trying to belittle that, but if you do a podcast for five years, that means you pay 30 bucks a year for it. So I don't know. I just, it's just, I get that we all want to do it for free. Who, who wouldn't want to do it for free? But if you really and, and this also doesn't mean you have to spend $10,000, but, you know, there there is an upfront. I like, if if your hobby is bowling, bowling is not cheap. You know, if, if you are golfing, I have a friend of mine that uh, when he goes to Florida to golf, he goes, I'm not doing that anymore. And he go, and I go, what's up with that? He goes, it's 150 bucks for 18 holes. He goes, by the time you, you get the cart and this and the that and you eat the meal, he's, it's 150 bucks. He goes, I like golf, but he goes, I'm not that good at it. He's like, I'm, he's like, and I got other hobbies that are cheaper. So I don't know. What do you say to the person that wants to do it for free? I mean, there are free hosts and there's, you know, you can use your uh, phone and, you know, there are ways that you can cut costs, but there's a part of me that just wants to go, really? Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can't put out. Cause if I bought an Xbox today, it's 300 bucks and that's not counting games. 
And I'm like, and yet nobody sneezes. Like, oh, what are you getting your kids for Christmas? I'm going to buy them an mm-hmm. Xbox. So it's it's odd that we just somehow, I don't know if it's because it's around MP3 files, and those are supposed to cheat, you know, thanks to iTunes, we all think it's cheap or free. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, son? Yeah, you know? I, listen, I try to cheap out all the time, and I regret it every, which means I have a lot of regret, because I do a lot <laughs> of cheaping out on this thing. And I, and then, then there's times where I'm like, oh, man, I'm glad I really didn't go down that rabbit hole, because you, you can do that as well get all this equipment. You know, I went down back in the, um, you can see it right over my shoulder over here. I went down the Oculus uh, VR headset rabbit hole last oh. year. I bought this new computer. I went down, those are a couple hundred bucks, you know, and I went down that I put the headset on and I tried doing a couple things and I was like, yeah, VR is just not for me. And I, had I bought, I mean, I should have sold it right away. I should have yeah. just sold it put the thing on it and sold it. I'm going to still try to make it work because I'm stupid that way. But the, the, that's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I probably should have stayed away from VR because it's just is not, doesn't have any applications at this point. And then there's other things where, you know, like I'm really glad I spent this money on this solar generator that I have. I could power it up via solar panels if I want to. It's plugged in right now. It works as a great UPS backup. For the 800 bucks that I spent on that thing, I'm really super glad I did. And you make decisions like that. The hard part, Dave, is knowing which is which, right? And so, you know, you just, you, you're going to make some bad decisions on it. But I, I'm with you. I, I, I get to the point sometimes where I get too cheap. And I'm like, you know, I should have spent a little bit more money, you know, on this. How do you know that? I, if you figure it out, let me know. I think you just learn to live with regret. <laughs> I think it just it boils down to that. Well, I heard somebody talk about this. Like so many times we get the cheap microphone and then later after we figure out we like it, we buy the the mid-phase microphone and then eventually we end up getting the expensive microphone. And his thing was, look, just save yourself the hassle and the money. Just buy the expensive one. And if you don't like it, sell it. And I was like, I kind of see that point, but it's it that can then be a major hurdle. You know, I, I was, you know, I started off with leftover stuff and then like somebody saw my background the other day, like, wow, that's so cool. I'm like, I didn't start this way. I said, I started in a basement. There were, there was no lighting. There was nothing. You know, I said, I just added pieces, parts here and, and there and you go for, for what you got. So, yeah. So I, I don't know, I guess uh, the, the question is though, having four microphones go into four channels Whatever oh, yeah. that's gonna that's that, the question. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be yeah. all a function of whatever interface you're using. And if you're using that Behringer thing, it might. The Behringer interface, if it's USB, might be able to do it. But I know there's is it ISO? There's some sort of audio thing that sometimes you have to turn on ISO and then your software might be able to see it. It's just gonna be a hassle. And I'm like, so if you got 150 bucks, go buy yourself a PodTrack B4 or Nope, I know Rode has a uh, a software, but that only uses Rode microphones, and that's it's basically looks like a um, a Rodecaster, but it uses all these Rode. Like if you had a if everybody had a Rode USB, you probably could use Rode software to do that. But that now you're now everybody's mm-hmm. putting two hundred bucks out. Like just buy a PodTrack B4, and you're you're good to go. Yeah, and the USB experience is terrible for no. the I think plugging yeah. plugging things in straight USB. On the PodTrack P4, can you get uh can you get audio back to a set of headphones and amplify yeah. that? So yeah, what's can- what's cool is you you plug your microphones in here, and then the other side here, these are yeah. all headphone jacks, and everybody has their own because you got deaf people like me, so you got that. Then on the other side, you you can plug it into a computer. So if you got somebody on Zoom, you got that. And then on this side, you can it's a TRRS cable, so you can plug that in over here. So you can actually have phone in channel four, um, computer in channel three, and then you and your co-host in channels one and two. So it's it's a pretty slick device. I the only thing, and I I expect them, or if they're smart, they should they should come out with the new PodTrack P4 Plus and have it be thirty two bit float, so that you could not basically record bad audio with it. But it's still my number one. Um, yeah, and then uh, Gary, hey Gary, says the P4 headphone amp is great, so it's handy. And that's where, because I have a headphone mixer in my closet, 
because it used to be whatever mixer I had, I'd plug that into the headphone amp and then everybody would plug it into the headphone amp. So it's just one other thing that they built into it. Um, and then uh, Randy has insights here. It says, uh, the Behringer UMC 404 HD does not do well on Windows with anything, but stereo inputs in my practice. I gave mine away to my brother for his, yeah. And that's the thing. That's where I'm, I need to go over and look at Behringer to see if they've done anything in the world of podcasting because their stuff was all basically for music or for musicians. And we were all just hacking it to do podcast stuff. Uh, One thing here, if you, I don't know if these are free, but Sticker Mule is having a thing right now, at least as of yesterday, where you can get a black t-shirt for nine bucks. So you're looking at the one that I designed yesterday and you basically get 10 bucks off. If you use my, if you go to support this show.com slash sticker mule, um, I think that's my link. Let me grab that real quick. You can actually get $10 off your shirt and the shirt's only nine bucks. So I'm kind of like, wait, does that mean you get it for you know, like minus you get, you get a dollar to buy a t-shirt. I'm like, that could be interesting. My link is, yeah, supportthisshow.com slash sticker mule. Uh, we'll get you over there. But that came in. And that's when I buy stuff from Sticker Mule is when they send me like, oh, coasters are dirt cheap. Uh, or in this case, black T-shirts are dirt cheap. So I went over. And, and what's cool is if you I, you, I just went over to Canva and said, use the template that's a T-shirt. And so I have all my School of Podcasting logos over there. And I, I decided to... Uh, Unearth the uh, famous line from one Glenn the Geek, of course. Um, don't be boring. And uh, throw that on a shirt. And so that was kind of a cool Black Friday thing. I was like, well, I'll take another shirt. So you'll see that someday on that. So Did did my mute work there? Was it did okay? work. Because all of a sudden okay, I'm like, good. wait, what's going on? I was like, oh, he's talking to someone there. Yeah, we, so. we, ha- we had a little crisis going on, so I needed to, to step away. That was really ha- uh, helpful to have. You know, Randy Cantrell sent me that rolls mic mute i think it's an mm11 and it's kind of old school right you would you would the xlr cables come in the back but it's like you can touch the button and and it'll mute your and as long as you hold the button it'll stay muted and you let off that has been man that's been a lifesaver on the microphone to have a to have a hardware activated mute button they, they get some cool ones now that you can buy that'll go red or green based on yeah. whether you're muted or not those are USB, I think, in most cases. This is still XLR, right? It's the big cables that go through. But, man, it's been handy having that, especially when an Amazon package arrives or something's going on around me or the wife wants to know where the placemats were. That's what she was asking. Where did yeah. the placemats go? And I'm like, it couldn't have waited 15 minutes? I mean, was it an emergency? But anyway, so. <laughs> it's a placemat we, we, emergency. We got a, it was. for the, I think she was trying to clean them. They, you know, it's Thanksgiving. We got schmuckus. All over the place, man. Schmuckus. So, schmuckus, yes. I hate when you get schmuckus everywhere. That that almost sounds like a, a nickname, like, oh, you're my little schmuckus kind of thing. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, Ran- but, Randy says get the Elgato Stream Deck pedal and use that to mute. You. you could do that. Oh, there you go. Um, you could do that as well. I'm just, I'm just a fan. Like, I'm, I'm still a fan of hardware equipment for those kinds of things. I mean, yeah, it's back to the question with the microphone. Yeah. You could do it in software via USB, but it's a terrible experience. I, I'd much prefer to have the P4 or a mixer or whatever. Anything the 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 um, the what was sound design? Uh, oh, um, yeah, it's the um, something three. I have mm, one sitting on my Mix, mix Pro. No, something. Mix Pre. Mix Pre. There we go. Yeah, Mix Pre three and Mix Pre six. I have a Mix Pre something sitting on my kitchen Those table. Are Those are it's great. It's They're expensive. And, yeah, but, I put it on sale at uh, Sweetwater in their used section, and so far, not getting a lot of nibbles on it. I'm like, mm, well, yeah. yeah. If, if you're going to do that on a regular basis, just a good idea to have hardware. It does hardware just doesn't fail on you like software does when something goes wrong. Well, know? I know, like right now, and I don't know why my Rodecaster will not let me record to my disc. And yes, I have a disc in it, and I'll have to reboot it. But when I hit yeah, the record button, true. nothing happens. But I did find out. That if, and it's, I'm sure I can switch this in the roadcaster. I've hit my mute button. Like if I hit my mute, you'll see. So it works here, but in the recording, it doesn't. And I've had times when I had Uh. muted myself to cough, but the 
the recording must be doing before the mute button or so. I don't know how it works, but uh, you know. Anyway, um, oh, this well, is maybe it's, maybe it's only going the mute only affects the live stream, right? So it's catching it. It's going through the recording and out to the live stream. Maybe that's the the track that the the audio takes. And so when you're muting it, maybe it's the mute only happens for live stream. Uh, video podcast. I would also like to publish my podcast on YouTube, but if I were to record videos of the episode, I would only I would have to use only one video camera, and therefore I would have a single fixed shot. So there's a thing called your phone that would be awesome for that. There are three of us talking. Do you think it could be a good idea, or would we need other shots for close-ups? To which I asked this person, you want to guess what I asked him, Jim? What'd you ask? I, I asked him, uh, does this need to be video? Like if you only need one camera and it's just talking heads, I did. Uh, and I had somebody the other day that actually said, "Wait, you can do a podcast with, uh, you know, you can do a podcast without doing video." And I go, uh, "Yeah, I recommend it all the time." Gary's saying he's not seeing my listing on Sweetwater, huh? Maybe I haven't put it. On. I know my I have a Presonus something microphone. Maybe that's why it's on my kitchen table. I'm supposed to be taking pictures of it. <laughs> It could be. Um, here we go. Uh, Brad has a fun question, which requires this. Oh, lovely. Here comes another 10-second tangent from Dave. Brilliant. Such absolute rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish. rubbish. Uh, it says, going going to see Kiss concert tonight. 50-year bucket list thing. Gene or Paul get up? Which do I wear? Paul would be much easier. It's just mm -hmm. the star. We're the Gene thing. You got to do the thing. So that would be it. It's a lot of fun. Um, they are lip syncing poorly, uh, these days. Um, really? Is it, yeah. do they disclose that? No, because they're, but there are, just go to YouTube and type in kiss lip sync. And it's, it's, you know, there are times when Paul's, you know, three feet away from the microphone and, you know, you hear, my, you hear the voice yeah. and you're like, there's no way. There's yeah. No way. And there's, He's well, there's a thing where one song where Gene goes way up into the ceiling, the song's called God of Thunder. And there are all these like little faces of Gene that are singing. And then it dawns on you that he's doing this on the stage in the, like you think it was four cameras and it's not, they're pre-recorded. And I was like, eh. wow. yeah, my favorite was Motley Crue um, who, who uh, they're suing each other and all sorts of nasty things. But the, at one point you hear the drummer go tss, 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 on the cymbals and he's not behind the drum riser. Like, <laughs> like, wait, who's, who's hitting. Yeah. So that's, that's, so there's no lip syncing here on uh, on Ask the Podcast Coach. So that's the no. It's we're doing all our own work, all our no pre-recorded content. Well, could you could you disclose? I know we had the whole Millie Vanilli thing, but yeah, could in this day and age, could you disclose like vocals enhanced and to to just come clean and be like, hey, look, we're old, we really can't do this anymore. But I know you want to come and hear what I can right. do that some of it there's going to be some background stuff there may be some stuff added do you think i don't know chat room or if you're on youtube and you want to make a comment on this do you think in today's world if we just disclose that and say oh. yeah we're we've added a few things to this that how different is that than playing the music and doing it real i i don't know yeah you uncle know? marv says was it as bad as dolly parton on thanksgiving yeah that was pretty bad because they she she did a thing oh. where she was doing her friendly bubbly dolly. She's like, "Hey y'all, I'm Dolly and I'm here. I'm going to sing my song for you." And it's like, and she wasn't even she was barely moving her mouth. And it was like, so. But I here's the fun thing, and I'm going to tie Dolly Parton into podcasting. All right. My brother bought her album Rockstar, and he said, he said because he heard some of it on YouTube, and he goes, "Here's the coolest thing. She she did songs." That you like you like you just don't like you don't touch Stairway to Heaven, you know what I mean. You don't do Purple Haze. There's some songs, but he said she did Stairway to Heaven. She did Freebird, and and that's kind of interesting because they took the vocal from the dead dude and put him in the thing, which is kind yeah. of cool. Yeah. But all these different songs, instead of trying to do, and, and I mean she does them so that you recognize the song, but she kind of put her own stamp on it. So when mm -hmm. we always say just be yourself. Yeah. Like that's exactly what she did. And the other thing I never realized is she's she actually has a much better voice than I thought. 
Because if you listen to her version of I Will Always Love You, it's kind of soft and sad. Yeah. And yeah. and the Whitney Houston, she's just belting it. And so uh-huh. she sings Wrecking Ball with her goddaughter, Miley Cyrus, and she can actually belt out some tunes. So I just thought it was, I was like, huh. And as I listened to it, I'm like, I'm like, not really, I, I could take or leave Dolly Parton. I, I, my honeymoon, my second one was, we went to Dollywood and that gives you enough Dolly Parton for a lifetime. Like, <laughs> like just everything, Dolly all, all the time. But I was like, I don't hate this. It's like, it's very, and, and I just thought about it. I'm like, she, yeah, exactly. DR said she dollified it. She did. Yeah. 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 So, well, t- made the best out of what she had available right. still at the, well, you remember, remember when, uh, Celine Dion did that duet with, um, uh, Rat Pack guy. What's his name? Oh, Tony Bennett. Uh, yeah. And no, was it him? Or maybe uh, I'm thinking uh, of the wrong. It was somebody who had already passed away. Oh, uh, and they did. Or was that a different combo of somebody? Well, I know uh, um, Nat King Cole and his daughter did some stuff. Okay. Well, Sinatra, think about maybe? That. I don't know. Maybe it was, I think there was, it was a Sinatra thing. Anyways, somebody alive, somebody already passed away. And then somebody, the person alive obviously sang their part. And then they blended in the, 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 you know, the other version of that, how I was thinking on the kiss scenario, how cool yeah. would it be if on some of the parts he can't sing, if a younger version of him came up on the screen, on the screen? and did those parts. And then he sang back up to himself as that was like, how cool would that be? That, that would, would be, be I mean, cool. And it would be honest. Like, okay, this was me 35 years ago. Yeah. I can't hit those notes anymore. I'm not even going to try. But we don't want to leave them out of the song because the people come to him. This has nothing to do with podcasting, by the way. But And I'm not even going to try. It, but how cool would that be, right? Just to admit it and, and show the video. I think that'd be cool. I think it's cool. That's how Paul McCartney was singing with John Lennon on, um, besides the new Beatles thing, but this was, they. he does a song called I Got a Feeling. And Peter whatever the guy, the director from that documentary that they did was able to pull just John's vocal and they have the video with just John's vocal. So it's kind of a a thing where Paul sings and then he sings very, very cool. But here's how you tie it into podcasting. Oh, sometimes you're like, I, I don't have exactly what I need to do what I want to do. And sometimes that's where being creative can come in and you're like, okay, so I don't have a DSLR camera, but I can buy this software that turns my phone into a webcam and then you do what you can with what you got. Um, yeah. Uh, Randy black says that Phil Collins had to drop three or four steps because he couldn't sing them anymore. The, it's yeah. funny. Well, they me, put him on a chair too, for it's not yeah. dead yet. Or they put him on a chair. That was sad. Yeah. I, uh, it, was, it, was, me, it was tough. It me was and tough. my friend, Constant. me and my friend keep saying father time. We're like, ah, oh, father time caught another one. And the latest one I heard and I love her voice is, Ann Wilson from Heart, and she was singing Barracuda. And you know, oh And she just, she was like, and you're down. She just said the word. She's like, I'm not even going to try. And I don't fault people for that because the rest of it sounded great. It's, there's a guy named Don Dawkin who was really big in the 80s. He's almost whispering the words at this point. He's like, unchain the heart. Don't tell me when the love is gone. I'm like, yeah, dude, your your voice is like, you're embarrassing yourself. That's why, you know, yeah. I mean, Glenn Campbell and Chuck Berry both went out with their kids because both of them, there was a, you know, unfortunately a hole in the marble bag. And uh, so the kids were out there to just kind of keep him in line. And, you know, it, it was kind of fun because Chuck came out, started one song and then just decided to go into another one. And you see his kids like, okay, dad went to song number two. So, but. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. there's a time to hang it up too, right? There's a time to kind of well, go. Well, um, no, maybe like, it's not there anymore. Well, and uh, who just brought him up? Uh, Todd the Gator. You know, one thing you can say about Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, you know, there are people out there that have been doing this for, yeah. you know, Metallica has been Metallica for 40 plus years and they're still like relevant, you know, Aerosmith. Steven Tyler still has an amazing voice. If he could just stay healthy, you know, Sammy Hagar's going out on the road. So, and they're all, all examples of that band just kind of being themselves and that whole nine yards. So it's fun filled and exciting if you can do well, it. There, so. And there are some things, I mean, even as we think about podcasting, we're all getting a little bit older and uh, there may be some things we just lose 
the ability to do and just continue. Like if you're going to continue to podcast, just say, hey, I can't do this anymore. I need some help or I'm going to get past me to help out with this kind of thing or, you know, whatever. But don't don't try to pawn it off as real. Like that's the kind of, you know, it's like it's like this whole fascination we have with with plastic surgery these days, you know, with you're like, do you, you do realize it's not getting better, no. like, but they keep doing it. And you're like, well, just, it would be so much graceful if you just let it, cause it gets worse as you get older and yeah. graceful. So I, I, I did an episode that I thought would get me in a lot of trouble on my building a better Dave. But I'm like, ladies, um, I don't find chipmunks attractive. I just don't. And they're, everybody's, you know, they're all, they look like the Joker by the time they get done. And yeah. there are a few people, you know, like Dolly Parton looks great for 70 something, uh, you know, so some people, but most people don't, you know, and I always think of the beautiful Meg Ryan who just ruined her face in oh, my opinion, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, literally did look like the Joker, you know, and then you I got, you know, and then there's Mick Jagger and, you know, um, you know, you got, uh, it's true. Brad brings up the point, Paul McCartney and Ringo. They're in their 80s. And now there's another one, Paul McCartney, Father Time, man. He, he can't sing some of that stuff anymore, but he's oh, no. yeah. he's getting close. But it's it's my favorite part of Paul McCartney is hearing what I used to call he would he would sking. It's screaming and singing at the same time. Like I got a feeling is a great one where he's just, ah, ah, and I'm like, I love that. Helter Skelter. And he, that's just not there anymore. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, but no, if, if you love the artist, you kind of give them a pass. And that's why you got a, you know, 20,000 people going to see Kiss. I was going to go. They just came through Cleveland. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to remember them the way I remember them because that was a great show. But uh, just don't sit too close or you'll you'll lose your eyebrows from the uh, the pyro. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at we Look at ne- neither you or I. No. You haven't had any work done. I haven't had it. Look how great we look. You don't have to, like. <laughs> that's because I'm sitting down. If I stand up, I, uh. <laughs> Well, that's a different problem. <laughs> yeah, not not this week, but next week I'm going to be talking about my my little comedy thing that I did. And man, watching the video, I was like, okay, I know the camera adds ten pounds, but oh my god, how many cameras were on me? I was uh, exactly. <laughs> it's like the yeah. stuff. Yeah, it happens. We 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 all listen. January's coming, so we, there's plenty of time to make some resolutions to uh, to get to get a little more fit. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. it. Another month, we'll all be back at the gym and that whole nine yards. So. But uh, speaking of things coming up uh, this week on the School of Podcasting, uh, it is the question of the month. And it's interesting. This is such a consider the source, but it's all about do you listen to to ads? Jim, do you skip the ads when they come on? Oh, for sure. Okay. I hate ads. <laughs> okay. Hate and uh, so it's interesting hearing people's takes on that. So that's this week. And then next week will be the one about the, the comedy thing. Jim, what's coming up on... Uh, TheAverageGuy.tv. My daughter, Sammy, joined me for our kind of annual catch-up nice. right after Thanksgiving. We did the show on Friday instead of Thursday. She you know, started a new job at the library, so we talked. And that library is getting ready to move locations. So we talked about some of the gadgets and technology and some of those kinds of things. It's always great. And then we went to Taco Bell afterwards to celebrate. Speaking of... We're, we talked about the, the app, the Taco Bell app, you know how yeah. good it is. And then we were both like, okay, we got to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> so first ever, hopefully uh, a new tradition, we go to Taco Bell the Friday night after Thanksgiving. That's the something. McDonald's app is the devil because it reminds me every Friday that there are free fries waiting for me. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm no, trying to watch no, no. my girlish figure and free yeah. fries are not helping by any means. Cause- the $5 cravings on, on Taco Bell is what catches you, right? That <laughs> cravings it. box. So it gets you every, I spent 10 bucks. We got a ton of food, but anyways, uh, available at homegadgetgeeks.com. Yeah. So thanks to everyone for in the chat room. Thanks to, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe and ring the bell. I clicked the button and it's still not coming up. Hopefully oh, it did finally. Um, but I'll get all that stuff figured out by next week. But uh, thanks. Everybody's going to Taco Bell now, Jim. We should have got them as a sponsor. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm working on it right now. It's so good. All right. And we will see you next week with another episode of Ask the Podcast Coach.